Bonjour masterminds and welcome to the evil lairs that I have built on the island of crown gold. I am very proud of the casino here. The guests leave rave reviews and it keeps the agents preoccupied before they make it into the infiltration of my true operation. But I am prepared to show you beyond closed doors so that you can see what goes on backstage. So Evil Genius 2 is all about building your evil base and the tutorial does a really good job of showing you um, what rooms you need to use and what uses they have, giving you a good start onto your base building. But what the tutorial does not do really well is tell you whether or not these rooms that you build are going to end up requiring significantly more space to support your operation or if they can effectively remain a side closet off of a corridor with just a simple piece of furniture in there. So I want to do a quick rundown of the different rooms that I am using in this about mid-game base. I have knocked out the tutorial and a few other stages of the main storyline, but I'm not quite to the end game yet, and I want to show which rooms I have had to expand over and over again and potentially open up into um, secondary locations. And hopefully this can help you guys be able to better plan out your next base or any um, extensions that you're going to build on the base that you are currently working on. We're going to jump right into it. We First off, we just have the simple corridor. These are the hallways that connect all of your rooms. They are the veins, the lifeblood of your base. Um, by default, they are four spaces wide. Now you can make them shorter than that, but you're going to start running into issues because then you will not be able to fit any security doors if you want to set those as checkpoints along your corridors. And some of the traps are also four spaces wide, like this poison dart trap. Um, it's not just set into one wall, it is set on both sides of the wall, and it has to be four spaces across to be able to set that trap down. Same thing here with the fan, um, the pinball bumper, all these things um, are going to reward you for keeping your hallways nice and open. The next room type that we have is the power station. And this, oh man, let me tell you, is going to be one of the biggest space sucks uh, that you're gonna have in your base. You start out in the tutorial with just space for two generators and then you're gonna run out of that over and over again. Um, you definitely wanna keep track of your power so that you're not hitting those power outages from the beginning. Uh, but as you can see here, I've ended up extending the power generator room into an enormous complex. You can eventually get more space efficient power generation um, out of the nuclear generator and further upgrades beyond that. Um, so once your room hits a certain size, you should not have to keep on extending it. You can just update the equipment that you are using inside it. Um, but if you don't want to do the cell and then rebuild and slowly upgrade everything, then you're going to be building more power stations in other locations. Um, not necessarily a bad thing to split up your power generation because agents love to sabotage your operations here, so having them divided could help you sustain a larger amount of power, and then um, you're going to end up with more pieces in the items here. Uh, you can get um, capacitors that will help power, give you a, an emergency power supply if you do happen to run out of your sabotage or if you go over the limit. Uh, but when you're going just early on, uh, your early planning, you want to remember that your generator is a 3x6 block as an item, so it pairs pretty well together to make a square, but just multiples of 3 are the best way to be able to lay out your early generators. Also remember that you have to have a walking path to get technicians in to be able to repair the generators, but those paths only have to be a single space wide, and there's not really any reason that I see to make them any wider. Um, so just try and build this in as dense a room as possible because it's going to be taking up a lot of space anyway. All right, next we are looking at the barracks. So the barracks can also be a pretty dense room to be able to support a lot of minions. You're putting minion beds and lockers in here, and you can gradually find upgrades and research that will help them fit um, up the locker banks, support more minions. Um, than what they do in the beginning. Now the barracks for supporting a large operation is going to need to take up quite a bit of space um, and you're going to want to match your ratio of beds to the lockers. I've actually ended up pushing a uh, second barracks over here. Um, I found that this was actually beneficial to start spreading these out because then 
you get beds for the minions across different parts of your lair, and then they don't have to spend so much time uh, just wasting time walking through the hallways to be able to fulfill their needs. So what I was doing just to keep up with the ratio of lockers to beds was noticing how close to capacity the beds were at every, any given moment, and if it felt like there were only a few spaces open, then I would try and extend the number of bunk beds that I was using. Um, and otherwise, if there seemed like there were plenty of open spaces, then I felt free to just put down more lockers without increasing the bunk beds. And I do think that it is going to be advantageous to have multiple barracks rooms spread throughout your base so that if minions get tired in any one workroom and that is the majority their main need is to get rest, then they can hop over and find a bunk bed rather than having to all just travel back to some central location. Next, we are looking at the mess hall. This is um, extremely similar to the barracks, except that it's only supporting one piece of furniture. Now this item, the basic food counter here, is not very space efficient, but that's what you get to use all the way from the beginning to the mid game. Um, it only seats three minions to eat and then one to serve them. Um, and it takes up a lot of space in all the areas around it, so you cannot pack them in too tightly. Um, but you're going to need a, a lot of these when you're supporting a large troop of minions, then feeding them is quite a deal and you're going to want to have space to be able to extend this dining area. Though similar to the barracks, you're also going to want to build multiple dining areas because if a minion gets hungry over here in the control room, I want them to be able to take this short path over here to be able to fulfill that need rather than having to walk all the way down the hall and then find a space over here. So having these as two, these are the two main minion needs is getting food and being able to get rest. So being able to split these up as kind of pockets of supplies for your minions throughout your base as you start to extend and build a really large operation is beneficial. All right, now we are looking at the staff room. So the staff room can just stay small. I would never build this room larger to hold multiple egg TVs. I would just build a second room that holds a single egg TV at another location to be able to serve as more minions. My build here is pretty awkward because I ended up extending the control room so there was no space to extend this and I was having, I'd had a large combat over here at the center of my base and that had piled up a bunch of bodies and body bags reduced minion morale which then directly, the, the minion morale is improved by the egg TV. So minions will show that they need to improve morale and take a break in the staff room if their morale gets really low. And I was seeing an exaggerated number of minions requiring morale because of all the dead bodies that was just reducing it right here at a central traffic path. So I was having a wave of desertions until those were all cleaned up and I thought that I needed to increase my capacity, but I didn't. As you can see, I don't have any minions using either of the egg TVs right now and I have a fairly large minion population. So this room is unnecessary and I would shut it down and switch it over to something else if I needed the space right now. Or just move it to another location, like potentially another floor if I start to extend my operations significantly onto the next floor. But yeah, after you build this in the tutorial, it can kind of stay out of the way and small because it just fits this egg TV and this can serve as a bunch of minions and it is a fairly uncommon need that they need to come here and improve it. Next, we are looking at the archive. The archive is just like the staff room. It is going to see minimal use after you build it in the tutorial. You don't need to make it any bigger. I have added a single extra re-education chair, but as you can see, no minions are using either chair right now. So you can probably get away with just one for a pretty long time until you start getting advanced agents who are going to be uh, really bamboozling your minions and sabotaging their smarts. Now we're going over to the infirmary and maybe you can see a trend. There's all these tiny rooms right here in the corner. The infirmary is one that you don't have to build very big, at least not until the end game. I just built this off of the tutorial, the required size to be able to fulfill that condition. I slammed in the one intense care pod, and that is it. Um, if you are seeing frequent battles, you may want to increase the number of intense care pods. 
but for me, if there is a large sequence of fights, then my minions usually just die rather than get injured and need to use the pod. Um, I don't have many advanced types yet, even here in the mid game, that are going to be able to take a significant beating and still survive to come back and use the pod. And then I slam down these little decorations just kind of as a test to see what they do. They all have different boosts, um, but being here in a room where minions do not generally travel uh, doesn't seem to be very useful. I wondered if minions would just kind of wander through to help use their effects as they are when they're not assigned any job at all, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It seems to be that only minions will only come in if they're going to use the pod, and that is pretty an, in, a pretty infrequent request of theirs. Haha, <laughs> now we're getting to the good stuff. The vault, the heart, the golden heart of the lair. So I had to start with a vault over here from the tutorial, and as you can see, I have extended it pretty significantly with a bunch of pallets of gold. Um, I am at 17% capacity here. That is because I have continued to extend my vault over here and I am actually in the process of building a yet more vault over here so that I can relocate to this upper floor that I can kind of keep as a max security area for holding my vault space. This is a pretty crucial room to be able to keep a large store of money. When times are good, you want to be able to stockpile a lot and then have a pretty big reserve to draw upon when you need to get something done quick for a mission you're gonna end up extending your vault a lot. Um, once you build, if you build the location in the tutorial as your vault, that's probably not going to remain your vault. Um, you can extend it a little to be able to keep up with your gold supplies, but then I would look at relocating it to a more secure location and really locking down that area of the, uh, the lair. Minions do not have to go in and out of the vault ever. Gold just magically appears here from your operations and then disappears whenever you spend anything. Minions never have to come in and out so you can make as elaborate a security checkpoint as you want to get into this vault um, to help protect you from other agents who are going to try and infiltrate like rogues who are going to want to take what you've got and then break out. Moving to the control room, this could also be argued as the heart of the operation. I have a miniature control room here. This is what I started with from the tutorial and I filled it up with the radio repeaters to be able to begin my criminal networks. And then I extended over here. I began with a small room of the computer consoles to be able to start generating intel. And then I ended up extending into way more radio repeaters. This is because I have been upgrading my um, criminal networks to level two and all the stuff in level two is going to start costing a lot of intel to utilize and it also takes a lot of signal strength to upkeep. Um, but I'm finding that those upgraded criminal networks are more valuable than having a lot of level one criminal networks. So if I'm using three radio repeaters, I prefer having one level two criminal network rather than three level one criminal networks. But that's just the approach that I've been taking in this game. I am still experimenting to try and find the um, optimum balance. And you're going to end up with a lot more um, item types that can go into this room. I have just researched the big screen and putting that in is going to require more wall space and then also empty floor in front of it so that you can have a minion watch the big screen and be able to keep your heat um, from increasing as quickly on all of your criminal networks. So you definitely want to have the control room with plenty of space to expand. This is a good room to try and consolidate into as few spaces as possible because it is going to be a minion worker hub and it can be very useful um, to put your genius here with their ability to force minions to prioritize the jobs around them because otherwise minions see the control room jobs as a very low priority job. Um, and if you are running low on your workforce, you are going to always see these chairs be empty. No one's going to work the computer consoles, they're going to be doing other stuff at the lair. Alright, hopping into the minion training room. Building up all those specialized minions. As you can see, I don't have too many of the minion types unlocked yet, but I have a little bit of space for some extra training locations. This is definitely a room that when you build it with a tutorial, you're going to extend it so, so much. 
Um, if you are playing with Maximilian, you want to be able to maximize uh, how many training pieces of the training equipment you can fit in as tight an area as possible because he will be able to instantly complete the training process of all of the minions using that training equipment within his radius. Um, so I have a little bit of space here to extend. I'm not playing with Max. Um, I just wanted to throw that out there. I am fully expecting that I'm going to need to build another training room to handle more advanced equipment later on, um, but I haven't gotten there yet. So what I've got is this as a start. Now we are looking at the laboratory. This is where the scientists work on their scientific breakthroughs. So when you start out, basically the most important thing is being able to have wall space for the whiteboards and not cramming other equipment so close to the walls that you block off being able to use that space for the whiteboards. Um, this other equipment is incredibly expensive and really power hungry. This is where most of your energy generation is going to get sucked up into. Um, you can, at the beginning, get away with a pretty small room, but you're eventually going to want to expand to be able to hold these more advanced machines that get pretty big. These uh, impact analyzers are pretty awkward shape with how thin and long they are, so you want to plan your room out around being able to get these in place. Um, I actually like this setup where you get two next to each other and then you use two of the data banks on one of the sides here and this kind of forms a nifty block that's pretty space efficient because scientists need to stand on this end and this end and then this end and so you could have the rest butted up against the wall. But I like that. Um, but yeah, depending on how much you're investing into your scientific workforce, this is going to take up a lot of space, um, but it's going to take up so much money you're probably not going to be extending it to be too terribly enormous. Also because your scientific progress gets bottlenecked based on your progress through the main story. Um, you can't just go all in on science and get the very best text from the beginning. So you want to kind of pace yourself. Don't put too much money into here. Um, make sure that you are focusing on your other operations as well because otherwise you're going to hit a point where you can't advance your science anymore and then you're going to have to downsize your scientists and probably turn stuff off or sell it. I'm not sure. Um, but then in the late game, you're going to want to pick it back up. So keep a nice, steady scientific progress throughout your game. That's kind of what I'm trying to say there. Now we've got the armory. I've tucked the armory over here next to the entrance to the lair. I find this to be the best kind of placement for the armory so that you can get your guards. The guards are going to hang out here at the table. And then when you need them, you want them to be able to respond to threats very quickly. So I want them to respond to your agents infiltrating here before those agents make it all the way out and potentially just escort them back um, to distract them before they get suspicious of the full scale of my operations. You're also going to have to fit your security cameras here in the armory. This is going to become pretty space intensive once you are operating a very large camera security network. Um, and you're gonna actually want to have more desks than you have cameras so that you have the option of still supporting those cameras even when a few of your minions are not working the tables. And on top of that, you're going to need to be able to put in the weapon uh, depots out of the armory. And so all I'm using right now is the club rack, but I should probably start extending this. They only support uh, giving weapons to five minions. And actually, any minion type can pick up uh, these these items. So, um, or at least multiple ones. I think that these are all for the security guys, but I've seen the stun batons get picked up by other minion types. So you're gonna wanna be able to keep your minions equipped with the best weapons as possible. Otherwise, you're gonna get what I got, which I said earlier was a pile of body bags over here, which decreased minion morale so much I had a wave of desertions on top of the tragedy of all the deaths right in the hallway. So that is your armory. I've left myself a little bit more space to expand depending on what other equipment becomes available and if I potentially want to put a second guard desk there or just more uh, tables for security cameras. You're going to want to make sure that this is in a position where you want your guards to be focused and also have enough space to support um, all of its functions, which are pretty varied. Sliding over to the prison, 
The prison is something that can be utilized as much or as little as you wish. Um, you can start out with just a simple holding cell in the interrogation chair to be able to make it through quests, or you can extend your capacity to be able to capture a large number of enemy agents and then interrogate them to be able to get a boost to your intel. What I was finding is that when I was using the, um, the computer banks in the control room, I was able to generate enough intel I didn't have to worry about capturing and then interrogating all of the guys. Um, and you get gradually better interrogation techniques. Um, and eventually what I'm really looking forward to is picking up the brainwasher to be able to switch enemy agents into your own minions to help bolster your minion numbers. I think that that will be extremely useful once I finally get it. Um, so you do want to have a little bit of space to extend the prison from what it is the space that is required to be for just the tutorial, um, but you don't have to go crazy on this unless that is the kind of evil genius you want to be in, so that's kind of the, the freedom. I could see some players building absolutely enormous prison networks. Um, the downside there is that enemy agents can only be kept behind bars in these cells for so long and then they just break out, so if you're just trying to hold a whole bunch of prisoners, you're going to have waves of prison breakouts and that just turns into a mess. You want to kind of deal with them pretty quickly by either interrogating them or brainwashing them. Um, so you want to make sure that you have that system to cycle them out of the prison just as much as you do the holding space to put them in the prison. Ah, now the inner sanctum! the finale, the crowning jewel of the tutorial setup. You want to be able to extend this beyond what you have to build in the tutorial because you're set with just 64 squares in the tutorial and then you have to put your desk in it and the desk is a pretty large piece of furniture. Um, but then you also definitely want to include the conference table here so what the desk does is it will improve the stats, or it will refresh, regenerate, whatever you want to say, the stats of your evil genius, and the conference table does that for all of your henchmen as well as for your evil genius. So once you start supporting your henchmen and using them in combat, you really want them to have a way to regenerate, and this, so this conference table is essential as I see it, and you're going to need to be able to extend this inner sanctum to support it. And I haven't gotten to do it yet, but throw down as many decorations as you can. Make it look, make it look real good in there. Finally, we are looking at the casino. This is the stealth for your operation. Um, it's going to start with a default layout and then a bunch of clutter that you can sell for money. And then you need to put in the equipment that you want to use. And you need to then figure out if you want this equipment to scam tourists or work as a trap for investigators. I've been pretty successful laying out a few machines in the direct path of the investigators, so that will try and slow them down, and then the auxiliary machines can be set to scam tourists. And then you're going to want to lay out some other of the uh, furniture options for the casino. These um, casino sofas often get draw congregations of the rest of the tourists and then you can kind of focus their attention within an area where you're trying to scam them and make as many extra dollars to support having this front as possible. You do have the option of extending the casino. Uh, you can build it off onto the sides. You can build extra entrances to your lairs. You can build mazes of walls and other casino furniture. Um, and so you can really try and slow the agents down in that way. Um, I have opted not to try and do any elaborate tricks like that because I want my valets to be able to service the casino and if they have to walk through a maze just to get to a roulette table somewhere that I have it placed out there, um, they're going to lose so much of their stats and then have to walk all the way back and they're going to spend most of their time just traveling to the job rather than actually doing the job. Um, so I like leaving it kind of open for that reason. Also, keeping it open is better for your henchmen being able to operate within the casino. Your henchmen are going to get bogged down by talking to tourists, but then you also want them to be able to cross paths with the agents um, in an area where the agents are not acting, are not suspicious, or are not going to involve combat. So you want to be mindful of how you're laying out your casino, and you can also kind of keep track over here, like how many of these operations are not manned by a valet. Right now I've got valets at pretty much everything. I don't have a valet out here and I do not have one out here. Um, so I could look at training a few more to try and keep everything manned 
as frequent as possible. There you go. That is a look at all of the rooms in Evil Genius 2 and how much space they are currently taking up in my base, how much consideration you need to give to them when you are laying out your evil lair. I hope this video helped you out, have an idea of how you can try and plan your base, what rooms you want to make sure you're able to extend and what ones you can kind of just leave in the corner as a little closet to help service your minions' rare needs. Um, if this video helped you out, leave a like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing a bunch more Evil Genius 2 content. I am loving this game. Thank you guys for watching and have a good one.